Hello and welcome to another video for WinBid Pro version 16 by GDS Estimating. In this one I'd like to talk about framing systems and kind of the basics of how they work in this new 16 program. Um, so the first thing to know is under catalogs you've got your available catalogs oops available catalogs and those are the ones that you've added to your company account and then you've got the catalog that's being used in the current job. So we have a frames icon here. You can get to all the different parts and other uh, configurations. But let's look at the framing systems. Um, so that's going to open up our window with a list of framing systems, in this case for YKK. And you'll notice this column that's called default. So this has checkboxes in all of these uh, rows here. And what that means is every one of these systems is a standard or a default uh, master system for this YKK catalog. And since this is a cloud-based catalog and all the data in version 16 is cloud-based, it allows you to get updates from us whenever we publish them. So those kinds of updates are kind of automatic. So if we make some changes to parts that YKK says, oh, a certain system has different parts in it now, we can change those. If we delete systems, those are going to be removed. If uh, same thing goes with the actual parts, um, the pricing, you know, any type of uh, detail information for a part may change. All that stuff can get published to our server and then it gets pushed to your account and you'll see it as a default uh, system that, that's been updated. Now if you actually go and edit one of these systems and make a change, like let's say I edit this system here, and if I change something like the glass bite or uh, if I change a component part or something like that, we'll get into this in a second, but if we change a part and a configuration here and I save it, it's going to ask me uh, if I want it to make a copy of it. And I do because if I make a change like that, it's going to save it as a copy and it will not have the little default box checked. So you're going to have the original default system and the one that you've, cr you've created or modified that won't say default, basically. So uh, that gives you the ability to get updates from us to see whatever is put out for that catalog and then also to create and change systems on your own that don't get affected by any updates we do. Those are just for your account. So that's something to keep in mind. So this is all at the kind of master catalog level. And then here we have an elevation in a job that's been created. So we can also go to the elevation tab, the first tab here, and hit edit, edit framing system from there. And the same window opens up where I have access to all this information, the default profile, glass thickness, all these settings. A lot of these help uh, select a frame from the list when you're creating your job or your elevations. But a lot of them actually um, matter for how things are drawn on the elevations. Like the profile is important. The cock joint determines uh, your frame size based on the rough opening size. Your glass bite determines glass sizes. Uh, whether wall jams interrupt the head and sill, whether there's a head receptor or a sill receptor, all those things can be uh, configured in this tab of the uh, framing system window here. So now we want to go to components and show you what that's about. So in this tab, there's all these different assemblies, head, sill, jams, vertical, all that. And then there's some regular components that are things like glazing gasket, any perimeter hardware or caulking that needs to be applied, um, and then even per elevation parts. Um, so even per light, if, if there's something that's unique per light. Uh, all these things can actually, a lot of these things can be added to the actual assemblies, but sometimes it's easier just to add them to these different uh, components, like glazing gasket, for example. Uh, if this same glazing gasket is used in every component, every assembly, then all we, for both inside and outside, all we need to do is say we want that one part two times, and it's going to make sure it's applied to every daylight opening. But you have the ability of um, 
and one thing to keep in mind is when you scroll in this window, you need to be in one of these kind of blank spaces in between the assemblies. Because if I try and scroll right here, it won't let me, but right here it will. So kind of a idiosyncrasy of this type of uh, tool we have. So let's look at the horizontal assembly just to see what that's about. So by assembly, we mean a certain component that has every part kind of related to it configured in one place. So we have extrusions in gray, we have hardware in yellow. If I were to add gasket, it would show up as green. Uh, and, and the different hardware and gasket have different settings that can be um, made, like the quantity. If I need uh, two water deflectors per horizontal, we have the quantity of two. If there's a part that needs to be every so, so many inches, like 12 inches on center or eight inches, and then it needs to be so, so far from the end. Uh, so for curtain wall, um, pressure plate screws or bolts is, is a big thing for that. So um, yeah, so we have uh, adjustments for all kinds of things, and that's all in this assembly window. And I have full uh, kind of CAD control over this drawing, this detailed drawing. I can zoom in and out and everything. But basically, in one place, you've got your drawing that shows all the parts and information, and you've got your part list that shows all those parts listed out with any type of modifications for quantities and measurements, etc. Um, this is also where the profile is set, so it knows how to draw it, and the glass bite. We can always modify that. If it's a little different for this component than it is for every other one, we can make changes to it. So there's other videos that talk about splices, and when we get back here, glazing options, you can find information on that stuff in other videos. But the main thing here is the, the gist of what these uh, framing system components and settings are about. Now, another important thing here is we can actually create additional assemblies. So let's say I need an alternate sill. And if that alternate sill, I would probably want to give it a different name. Um, than the regular sill so that I can determine which is which from the list when we go to change the alternate. And let's say this one's four inches in profile and it needs a four inch reveal. Uh, the glass bite, let's say it's the same as the others. We can actually add the part numbers for this assembly uh, if we know them you know, either in front of us or the top of our heads or we can just browse and I can start searching for um, sills and, or whatever I need. Um, the filter tools here are important. These are kind of throughout the program. If I'm only looking at extrusions, I can filter those. There's other things, you know, you can filter from any of these columns, but this, you got your standard search and then you have a very uh, detailed kind of searching filter you can use here. But let's say this is the sill part I want. If there's a filler or some sort of glass stop, I just keep adding parts. Um, I can also add the hardware, the gasket if it's different for this alternate sill than it is for the standard, all those types of things. So one caveat here is we don't yet have a way for users to upload details. So if there's a different detail for this, which there is because it's a four inch profile, um, you would have to kind of grab that and add it to your shop drawings kind of manually at this point, but we do plan on giving you as a user the ability to upload details and it would basically add them to your company catalog. Uh, and it just has to be done correctly with all the online security and uh, you know all those types of considerations. So keep that in mind, but in the meantime, we can configure all the parts, which kind of gives us pricing and all the other details gives us the drawing uh, correctly. So when that shows up as another assembly, then I can save this. Actually, before we do that, I've made changes to this framing system. So I can actually um, make a note that says it's been modified. So that's something that if I want this system to show that it's been modified because maybe I'm only making this change for this one elevation. Now I can actually tell it I want the change to be made to all elevations. Uh, so that's where, when I go to save it, it comes up with this message. Um, so update all elevations using this framing system. 
If I say only current, then it's only going to do the one I was looking at. If I say confirm change, it's going to update all of them. So if you do decide to do only the current elevation, you would want to change the name of the description a little bit so that you know that it's different than the rest of them. So let's do that in this case. I'm going to say only current. So now when I go to the other elevation here and I look at the framing system for that uh, elevation, I'm not going to see that additional sill assembly. So if I would have told it to save for all elevations, I would see whatever things I've added to the, uh, that initial screen I was in. So keep that in mind. It kind of gives you ultimate flexibility or control over what changes are made to what elevations or any subsequent elevations. So, um, so that's pretty much it. Keep an eye on other videos, and thanks for watching.